right. Um, well, I think we can go ahead and get started um, so that we have um, plenty of time to hear from Alex today. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Chelsea Paggio. I am from the alumni office here at Point Loma Nazarene University. I um, have the opportunity to be the assistant director of alumni relations at Point Loma. Um, we're so excited to be partnering with the Center for Justice and Reconciliation this week um, for their Wear Justice Week. Um, we also have Rihanna Contreras on here today, um, who works for the Center for Justice and Reconciliation. Um, she's the program director of community relations, um, and she's um, been working hard with students as well um, to make this week happen. Um, so a quick highlight on Wear Justice Week. Um, it is a week-long event and student-led initiative um, that challenges us to rethink consumerism through community. Um, and this week, uh, students are focusing on examining the fast fashion industry to raise awareness and action around unethical supply chains uh, and exploitation behind the clothes we wear and the products that we use. Um, if you haven't checked out all of the events happening this week, there's some really awesome things going on and you can go to wearjustice.com uh, to see what's going on. And you'll hear a little bit more from Rihanna at the end. Um, and I am uh, proud to be with the alumni office. Um, we offer a Loma Talks series where we hear from our very own Point Loma alums who share their expertise with us on a variety of topics. So it was the perfect opportunity um, to connect with Alex Hood. Um, we were introduced to Alex through the Center for Justice and Reconciliation. Um, and she's going to be sharing with us today. Um, she graduated from Point Loma in 2013 um, and is a mom of two um, and with a heart for inspiring moms to find joy through simplicity. So some of the things that she's going to talk about today with us are decluttering our closet, um, living more sustainably, um, choosing to live more simply in, in our wardrobe. Um, so um, I'm going to pass it off to her in just a second, but I do want to just make a couple quick announcements. Um, first, the chat box is for us to use. If you do have any questions, please feel free to write questions in the chat box throughout this session. Uh, we're going to do a Q&A with Alex at the end, so we're very excited to hear. Um, if you have any questions for her, please feel free to do um, questions in the chat box, and we'll have the chance to ask those at the end. Um, and then the second just quick note is that this is being recorded. We will have it available um, afterwards. So we wanted to give you a heads up for that. So um, that is it for me. Um, I know you want to hear mostly from Alex today. So I will jump off and toss it to Alex. So let's welcome her. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea, for that intro. Um, yeah, so like Chelsea said, I graduated from Point Loma in 2013. Um, I was in the international studies department, I guess that's what my degree is in, and I had a focus on Latin America. Um, and like she said, I am a, currently a stay-at-home mom. I have two kiddos, uh, Izzy, who is three, or he'll be three in two weeks, and Luna, who's six months. And um, I'm also like a social media freelancer on the side, and I blog mostly about the season of life that I'm in, but I've blogged a lot about um, my closet and my journey with like capsule wardrobes and minimal wardrobes and curating all of that because it's kind of changed since I first started that process. Um, so I actually started my like sustainability journey um, after I studied abroad um, through Point Loma. So I have always cared about like conservation and stuff like that. I was, as a kid, I grew up watching uh, PBS nature shows. I don't know if anyone else grew up watching stuff like that, but I was very interested in conservation and nature in general. Um, grew up camping, grew up going to like parks and stuff like that. And um, then like, as you know, when you become a teenager, you're like too cool for that kind of stuff. And so um, after I studied abroad in Costa Rica, I was kind of, it like re-sparked that part in me because um, obviously Costa Rica is very big on ecotourism and sustainability. And um, yeah, just kind of being immersed in that. When, once I came back to campus, I really wanted to focus on sustainability as part of like my topics of research and stuff like that. Um, I actually, I was telling the ladies Earlier, I still have my Sustain PLNU cup mug. I've lost the, the, the top to it, but I still have this after all of these years because it just was such a formative experience for me to like come back from studying abroad and start 
my looking at my life and wanting to have like a more sustainable attitude towards my lifestyle. So um, after graduating, I like was working a couple of jobs that I wasn't super interested in and I needed a creative outlet like a lot of us look for. <laughs> and uh, I started my blog Tinted Green in like 2015, I think. And um, the whole concept of Tinted Green came because I was listening to this song um, and there was a lyric about like rose colored lenses. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh, like that's, that's it. I want to look at my life, not through like this rose tinted lens of like optimism and dreaminess. I wanted to look at my life and see kind of where I could make small changes um, to be more sustainable. Um, and so that's kind of where tinted green comes from in case you're ever wondering why I picked that name. Um, so I was living this kind of, I was working in an office. I had a really long commute. I was living in the suburbs and I had, I kind of felt like I needed to do something with my life about sustainability. And so I sat down and I made like this really big mind map of this big brainstorm session of all of the things that I could possibly do to live more sustainably. And I came up with a couple of themes in my life. Um, it was, for me, it turned out to be much more of like a, a heart thing than like a doing thing. I wanted to address kind of the heart of the issue when it came to sustainability for me and my life so that that could guide me no matter what season I was in. And there are three things that really st have stuck with me throughout all the years. Um, I started, you know, thinking sustainably, you know, in college before I was married, before I had kids, before all of that. And that kind of stuff still, um, still guides me to this day. So um, I think if we're thinking about being green parents and or eco-minded parents, there are some things that um, maybe this can help inspire you, I guess. Um, so one of the things for me that's important is connecting to nature. Um, for me, like my connection to, to nature, being in Costa Rica, obviously seeing that beautiful creation. But even when I was younger of like going to the beach, going to see the trees, just spending a lot of time outside, connecting to this thing, uh, this creation, I guess, um, that is what kind of motivated me to even want to live sustainably. Um, I think it's really hard to steward something and steward over something that you're not tied to. And so if we're thinking about raising kids who are eco-minded, um, I think it's really important to have them experience nature and be outside and learn to see the beauty in like a really, really old tree or the beauty of a leaf and the cycle of of nature itself. I think if you can foster an appreciation for that, um, then you're much more likely to raise kids who want to compost or who want to um, recycle or, you know, lower their consumption, lower their, um, I guess, plastic usage in the future, like when they, when you no longer have control over, you know, a lot of their life. Um, so that's really important to me um, and something that I really am trying to do with my kids. Um, and then the other thing is obviously we can't talk about being eco-friendly without talking about reducing our waste. Um, and so that's something that I've definitely, I feel like I made a lot of progress before I had kids. And then once I had kids, it got really, really tricky just based on like living situations and um, like different constraints of lifestyle. Um, so I think you can start wherever you can. So for me, a lot of that started with having like a water bottle that I carry around constantly. Um, and ever since I started doing that, I don't buy plastic water bottles like ever, um, except for like having for emergency use, you know? Um, and then I think also a, a good spot to start could be your kitchen or your bathroom if you're interested in reducing your waste there. I think there's a lot of products out there that can help you reduce your waste. And there's a lot of swaps available for the kitchen and for um, the bathroom as well. Um, but I think the thing that is like my top priority, I would have to say, is really thinking about our consumption habits in general. Uh, I'm a firm believer that we cannot buy our way to a sustainable lifestyle. And I think that's really important. Um, cause like I said, I think we have to address the root of the issue, address the heart of the issue. Um, if we, like, I think we could go out and buy whatever sustainable product we could or ethically made product that we could, but if we don't change the rate at which we consume things, 
um, and therefore consume resources, then we're we're still not really making, we're just shifting what we buy. We're not really addressing how much we're buying. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm gonna talk to you guys about today. Cause for me, capsule wardrobes were a way to really change my, and really shift my way of consuming um, in just like at the base level of how much I consume. I don't know about you, but I was definitely, I've always loved shopping. I love shopping for clothes. I love style. I love clothes in general. And so I would find myself really often um, just like getting drawn in by the deals and thinking, oh my gosh, like, oh wow, if I buy, you know, three of these, I get one of them half off or whatever the deal is of the day. And so I would think I need to buy right now in order to get a deal. Or I would be drawn in by like just the store and the way a store is styled and just kind of the aspiration of what kind of person you would be if you wore this kind of clothing or if you had an outfit like this. I really fell, I fell into that trap a lot. Um, and after graduating, I was kind of in this transition of life where I had leftover clothes from college and from debate because I, I was on the Loma debate team. <laughs> um, and so I had like all of these different clothes from different parts of my life and I just didn't, um, I didn't really have an idea of what I of what I had. Um, everything was just kind of left over, and so I had this closet full of clothes um, that, and I felt like I had nothing to wear. Like I can't tell you how many times I was getting ready for the day of going to work and thinking, "Oh my gosh, I have like literally, I don't want to wear any of these clothes, but my closet is stuffed." And so, looking into all of this kind of led me to minimalism and specifically capsule wardrobes. Um, so capsule wardrobes kind of just, they were a really easy way for me to take a look at my consumption habits. I all of a sudden became really aware of what I was buying and how much of it I was buying and where I was shopping from. And I started asking myself the question of, is this purchase worth it? Like, am I getting the wear out of the clothing that I'm purchasing? Um, and so, so I started like thinking about that kind of stuff. And the, the beautiful thing about doing a capsule wardrobe or a minimum wardrobe or whatever you want to call it is um, it's also helped me like really hone in on my style to the point where nowadays I can look at a piece of clothing on the rack in a store and say, oh, that's really pretty, but that's, that's not for me. Um, I, I very much know what colors I'm drawn to, what I feel best in. Um, all of that stuff. So what I wanted to do today is um, talk a little bit about how I go through my closet and like do a, do a real declutter. And um, I, I've come up with a really simple way of doing it. There's definitely a lot of content out there on the internet that tells you to like print out a planner and think about, you know, what your lifestyle is and how you want to feel in your clothing and uh, what colors do you think you're drawn to? And if you've never done something like that before, if you've never paid attention to your closet before, it can be really overwhelming <laughs> to try to answer those questions. Um, I certainly was like paralyzed for a really, really long time because I wanted to like, I wanted to do it right. And I felt like, you know, I've had this whole closet available to me and to think, oh my gosh, what now I can only have 30 items, 37 items, what, what have you. I was like, no, 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 that's, that's way too much pressure. So I, right now, I don't do kind of an arbitrary number when it comes to capsule wardrobes. And I think that's probably the trend nowadays with people who curate their closets is just, there's no number. It's really just whatever feels like it fits your season of life. So um, I wanted to give you guys my my little rundown of how I go through my clothing. I actually just went through my closet maybe two weeks ago, because it's starting to get warm here in Sacramento. And um, I had a lot of thick sweaters in my closet that no longer needed to be taking up space. So um, this is kind of what I do. And I'll kind of show you guys examples of um, my different, different pieces that fall into different categories. So um, I think a lot of us have a capsule wardrobe already living in our closet. And for me, I, the capsule wardrobe is 
mostly made up of your like closet heroes. That's what I call them. Like your the pieces that you know you love, your favorites, you reach for them all the time. For example, I'm having a real moment with this like coppery brown and I have a t-shirt that I literally can't stop reaching for. I wear that t-shirt, I don't know, like all the time, all the time, sometimes two days in a row because I love it so much. So something like that I know is like my closet hero. Um, so what I do when I start going through my closet is I take everything out of my drawers, everything out of my closet that's going to be in season. I go through like my storage stuff under like under the bed storage where we, I keep like my off season clothing. And what I do is I pull out um, like all my spring summer stuff is what I would have done a couple of weeks ago. I pulled out all my spring summer stuff and I put it on the bed. Um, and I, what I start doing from there is I start trying stuff on. Um, I think trying stuff on is really helpful because it, especially if you've gone through like a change in your life, like if you just moved to a different city and now all of a sudden the, the weather is different, or if you, um, like I just had a baby six months ago. So I have certain things that I need my clothes to be able to do. I need to be able to nurse in my clothes. Um, a lot of my pants don't fit. So I need to like know what fits and what doesn't. Um, so I think trying on your clothes is really, really important. Um, I like to take this opportunity to play like the Lizzie McGuire soundtrack and like, you know, pretend that I'm like in a fashion montage moment. Um, but so I start trying stuff on and then as I'm trying stuff on, I will sort, th sort things into different categories. And I have three categories. The first is gonna be the love it item. So like I was saying earlier, the stuff that you're like, oh, I know I wear this. I love this piece. I feel so good in this piece. It fits well. I love the color, the quality is there, the, the fabric. I really enjoy the fabric, all of that stuff. Um, those are like your love it pieces. And then I will go to my obvious nose. So stuff that I'm like, oh, no, this does not fit right now. Um, or I don't really like this anymore. I, I kind of liked this back in the day, but I'm not really reaching for this color anymore or whatever the reason might be. And then um, thinking about the stuff that you're unsure of. So sometimes it can be sentimental items. Like uh, I have like my... Loma sweatshirts that I do not wear like ever, but I have them and I love them and I can't bear to get rid of them. So stuff like that, um, I sort them into those three categories. I think about stuff that I love, stuff that I definitely don't love and stuff that I'm like, kind of like it. I'm unsure about it. I don't know what to do with that kind of stuff. So then what I do is I take the stuff that I love and that's a for sure. That's a hero piece in your closet that goes back into a drawer or the, on a hanger, whatever, however you store your stuff. Um, then I start to, and so for me, like, let me show you the t-shirt that I'm talking about. So like for me, this t-shirt, I, I wear it constantly. That's a hero piece for me. I wear it all the time. There's also something like this shirt. I found this, this is like a sweatshirt material. And I found this like thrifting three years ago. I love this shirt. I love the color. It's like so unique. It's like very, very cool to me. So I'll wear something like that and I will just stick that back in my closet. Um, and then I have, then I move on to like my kind ofs. And the kind of pile is, um, it can be like your sentimental stuff, like I was saying. And I am not a, I'm not an advocate of getting rid of sentimental stuff just because you don't wear it. I think sentimental things are sentimental for a reason. And so what I do is I will, I'll keep that stuff. Um, I like, I have my Point Loma debate cardigan that just like means a lot to me. It was really important to me in that time of my life. And it's like, you know, it's a, it's very nostalgic for me. So I'm going to keep that forever <laughs> pretty much. Um, and so I just store stuff like that in, um, I have like one, one little bin under my bed where I keep those kind of more sentimental objects. I have a, a dress I wore for my maternity sh shoot. Um, I wore it for like a maternity photo thing. And, um, I keep that under my bed also, cause I'm just not ready to part with it. And every once in a while I'll reevaluate whether I want to keep something like that, but usually I, I want to keep it. So that's safe. Um, 
I'm never going to tell you to get rid of something that's sentimental to you. Um, the other thing, then there's other stuff like maybe they're guilty purchases. Like maybe it's something that's like new with tags that you still haven't worn, <laughs> or maybe it's something that like you kind of love or you used to really like it, but now your style has changed a little bit and you're not sure how you feel about it. So for me, for example, these shorts, this is a perfect example of a maybe item for me. So I, I love the color, clearly. I love the color of these shorts, but um, I tend to like things that sit right at the hip. So something with like a higher rise. And these are definitely like a lower rise short. They sit on my hips instead of above them. And so when I went to try this on, I was like, something's just kind of off about this. Like, I love the color. I love that it's like a linen blend. It's very good for the summer. It's comfortable, like, you know, very pandemic friendly. <laughs> it's like elastic waistband, all of that good stuff. But there's that one little thing that I wish I could change. So even though I think I'm gonna get some use out of this, I'm gonna put it back in my closet. And what I'm gonna do, is with something like that is I'm gonna make a note in my phone and like write a little note of look for high-waisted copper linen short, something like that. And I make a note of stuff like that that I want to upgrade or replace eventually, like if I find the perfect piece. And that way, when I do go shopping, I'm not just like shopping mindlessly, I'm shopping intentionally. Um, so that's what I do with like the kind of things. If there's something in your closet that you're like, you know what? I don't really wear it. I don't, I don't know if I really like it. Let me show you an example of this. Um, my shirt is wrinkly, but so something like this is like, this looks like it would belong in my closet. It looks like something that I would wear, but there's something about this that I'm just not sure of. And I'm not really ready to get rid of it because I think this is a good basic for a, any closet. You know, it's like a thin button up short sleeve shirt in a color that I like. Um, but what I do is I'll take something like this and I will put it in what I call limbo. And limbo is basically like a suitcase, an empty suitcase that lives in my closet. And what I do is I put this kind of stuff that I'm, I'm not really ready to get rid of it, but I'm also not really wanting to put it back in my closet. So I'll do, I'll put something like that in limbo and six months from now or next year or in three months or, you know, whatever time I decide, I will go back and I will reevaluate whether or not I want that piece in my closet. And the reason that I use something like limbo is because there might come a day in the summer where I'm getting dressed and I think, oh, you know what? I really would love to wear that green short sleeve button up shirt. And what I don't wanna do is have to dig through all of like my, I don't have to like lift my mattress and dig through the bin to try to find this one shirt because that's kind of a lot for one shirt. So what I do is I keep it somewhere that's a little bit handy. That way, if I do want to go wear that, I can go get it and kind of prove to sorry, prove to myself that uh, I do want to wear that thing and that it is useful for my closet, for my style, um, or I can prove to myself that I, I don't need it. Um, and I think that limbo can be really helpful if you've never decluttered your closet before, um, because it can be really hard to let go of clothing. It can be really hard to let go of stuff because um, our clothing can sometimes be a little bit of a relic of who we used to be and who we thought we would be. And so I like, I think that limbo is a nice little way of being gentle with ourselves of, I'm gonna put this away and see if I wear it. And if I don't wear it, then maybe in six months, I, um, I'll go back to it and see how I feel about it. Am I ready to let go of that um, or am I not? And I've had some things kind of in limbo for like, six months to a year. It just depends on um, how, I, how I'm feeling. Um, and then the last thing I do is, or one of the last things I do is I start handling the, the don't loves, the stuff that's very obviously like, it's not in good condition. I just don't wear this anymore. Um, 
And so what I, and all I do with that pile is like that, your no pile is the stuff that you're going to get rid of. And so what I do from there is I decide whether or not a piece of clothing is in good enough condition to be donated or to be sold at like consignment, like something like Buffalo Exchange or some other consignment store, um, or maybe doing like a clothing swap with friends. If you've got friends who have like similar styles and stuff like that. Um, I, I try to determine if that's in good enough condition for someone else to use. Cause I, like, I do not want to be the person who like donates their ratty, you know, clothing that just is not, is not wearable truly. Um, so I decide if it, if it can be donatable, that's, I don't know if that's a word, but that's the word that I think of. And, um, if it is, then I set it aside to, to do that. And if it is not, if it's in, like really bad condition and it's just, no one is going to wear this and I don't like, it's, you know, stained or there's holes in it or whatever. What I try to do is I try to upcycle it. Uh, cause I think that's really important. A lot of our, it's, it's a textile and sometimes you can use, uh, you can cut up an old t-shirt to use as a dust rag. Um, that's something I've definitely done and, uh, try to get as much life out of that as you can. Um, when it comes to like cleaning, or maybe you can, I don't know, dye it or make a, some sort of like pillow cover or whatever. Out of it. Um, I'm not a crafty person. So I tend to just like try to cut it up and use it as a cleaning rag as long as I can and then toss it. Like once I really can't get any more life, any more use out of a piece of clothing, then I will um, toss it. If you can find a, a way to recycle your clothing, that's like obviously even better. Um, but sometimes some things are just, they end up in the trash. And I personally like my heart breaks every time I end up having to put something, a piece of clothing in the trash, because I know how, how much uh, clothing contributes to like waste. So I think about that a lot. So once we've like decluttered our closets, um, there's two more things that I do. The first is I start to really notice what it is that I'm wearing. Um, this is one of the reasons that I even started like taking pictures of my outfits. Uh, I used to do this before Instagram. I used to just send outfit photos to my friends. We would just like text each other our outfit of the day. And if you have friends who want to like, you want to join in with this, if you don't want to like broadcast it, obviously to the internet, you don't have to, you can take a photo for yourself, um, or send it to your friends as accountability. Um, there's also a really cool app that's called Cladwell. And um, that app will kind of help you track, you can input your clothing into that app and it'll help you track what you end up wearing. It'll show you what's most worn, what's the least worn. And that can kind of help inform you as to like whether or not you wanna keep something. Um, I used that app for a little while, but um, for me, I've, I'm kind of old fashioned in the way that I just like snap a quick little selfie and um, pay attention to what I'm wearing. And I use that information to help me decide what gaps exist in my wardrobe. Um, so kind of going back to that list we made of like the maybe products that you want to um, upgrade. Uh, what I end up doing is I make a list of, oh, I'm realizing I don't have, like right now, I declutter a bunch of stuff and I realize I don't have a slip on sandal to wear in the summer. And like, just for convenience sake, as a parent, I want to be able to like quickly slip on a sandal to walk outside or walk out the door to take my kids to the park or whatever. And so I have a mental, not just a mental note, but a note in my phone that says slip on sandal. And for me, it's probably going to be like a brown color because that's the kind of color that I gravitate towards. Um, and so what I, it, what that helps me do is next time I find myself um, in any store, whether it's a thrift store or whether I'm shopping on ThreadUp or on Poshmark, or if I'm going into like a, a regular store, I can kind of have laser focus on, I don't, I don't need to be distracted by all the pretty things or even all the things on sale. What I am here to do and what I'm here to look for is my, you know, my slip on sandals, my high waisted short. Um, there is a rain jacket not that it's raining here, but there's a rain jacket I bought on Poshmark last year that just does not fit me anymore. So 
I know that like come next rainy season season, I'm going to need, uh, I'm going to need a rain jacket. So I've got those things in a list. Um, and that helps me shop for myself. And it also, uh, just like as a bonus, it helps me create like my Christmas list and my birthday list. Um, I don't know about you, but like my, my family really likes to ask me for my Christmas list. So I always think about that kind of thing. And I try to be really intentional about what I'm even asking for when it comes to gifts, especially if it's clothing. Um, so yeah, I hope that, um, made, made some sense. <laughs> I, um, got a little bit of an adrenaline, adrenaline rush there. So, um, yeah, I'm, that's kind of my, that's my little, that's my spiel. Um, if I wanted to show you guys my closet, cause this is literally everything that I have that I'm currently wearing and I counted before we started and it's, um, including the, the jeans and the top that I have on it's 37 pieces not counting my shoes. Um, cause I'm like, I don't, I don't count my shoes. I think shoes can be kind of an investment piece and a sneaker, um, a sneaker can like last you a really long time. And, uh, I, I just don't feel the need to like count my shoes. Cause I think that just is too much. So, but there's 37 pieces here in like tops, bottoms, a coat, a little chore jacket, that kind of thing. So anyway, that's, um, that's everything that I have as far as talking about how to declutter our closet. So I'd be, I'm happy to answer some questions. I saw some stuff like popping down um, from the chat. So happy to answer questions. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Alex. Um, yeah, we have had a couple and if anybody has some other questions that they want to um, chime in on, please feel free. Um, so Jamie asked a question here. Um, Jamie is saying, how long does something stay in limbo? Do you have a cutoff for moving it out? Um, I don't have a, well, my cutoff is probably honestly, it's probably like two years. And I'll say that because I don't, I tend to not declutter my winter clothes in the spring, summer. Um, I think that when we try to like look at our off season clothing, once the weather is getting warm, I have found that it's a lot easier to get rid of something and then come back in the winter and be like, I really wish I hadn't gotten rid of that green turtleneck because now I want to wear it. So I don't declutter like my winter stuff at the beginning of spring. I wait. So limbo is going to be a little bit longer, but it's really, um, I would probably say like six months to a year or whenever you feel like you want to transition your wardrobe again. Awesome. And I'm going to kind of jump a couple questions, similar kind of category. Leanne asked, so when you for example, when you go to the snow um, and you purchase those items, are they, or do you purchase them or do you keep them in the storage area? What do you do when it's not that season or you're, you're not using it often? Um, so if you're, for me, uh, what I would do, so what I do, this was like my, my swimsuit stuff. I don't live, like we don't go to the beach in the winter, for example. I keep my swimsuits or like my very seasonal things. I keep that in under bed storage. Um, Snow gear like definitely has its season. If you're like someone who goes skiing or snowboarding a lot, or you just like to go out to the snow. Um, if you do that a lot, then um, I would probably keep that in its own kind of storage container um, where that like when you're ready to use it, you can grab it. And once that season is over, you can put that away. Um, and that way it doesn't have to like mix in with your other like regular winter clothes, if that makes sense. That's, that's how I would tackle that. Awesome. Um, so when you're deciding what you need, where do you, do you have any recommendations for where you can go shopping to get, um, get some of these important items for a capsule wardrobe? So it all really depends on what budget is. Um, I am someone who we live on pretty much a single income. So I don't have a ton of disposable income to spend on like really, really beautiful <laughs> clothing. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that I think having that list is so important. Um, that way, when we do go shopping, wherever that is that we can do, obviously, if you can thrift something, 
that's going to be wonderful because it's secondhand. You're giving new life to a piece of clothing. Um, Poshmark, I have had some really great success with Poshmark. Um, if you're looking for a very specific piece. So um, there was like this Sherpa jacket that I really wanted and it was from Madewell. And I was like, oh, I don't think they have it anymore. Also, I don't want to pay the full price of Madewell. So I looked on Poshmark, sure enough, found the exact jacket I wanted. And it's, it's one of my most worn jackets. Like I live in that thing in the winter. Um, so I really encourage you once you have your list, look somewhere like Poshmark in the brands that you kind of know you already love. Um, I worked at Madewell for a long time. So there's a lot of like old Madewell clothing in my, um, in my closet. There's also like, I know I, I like Gap. So when I go to consignment stores, there's a local one here where I got this Gap chore coat from. Um, and then there's places like if you find yourself shopping at like Old Navy or Target or um, like a TJ Maxx situation, obviously not the most like sustainably minded store to shop at, right? But it is affordable. And if you need to find something affordable and you can't find it thrifting, you can't find it on Poshmark, or maybe you just walk in the store and you see the thing that you've been looking for all of this time, at the very least, you can be making a thoughtful and purposeful purchase instead of walking into the store and doing a big shopping spending spree and coming home with a bunch of clothing that you don't need. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you got into brands there and some of the things that some of the brands that you really love, are there any others that we should know about um, that you really like, or you recommend um, going to? Yeah. So I, um, if we're I really, like I said, I really love Madewell for their denim. I, mm -hmm. It's just a denim that I really, really enjoy. Um, I've also really, since I've had a baby and my like sizes changed, I definitely have looked at um, Old Navy denim is not as pretty good quality for what you're paying for. Um, and I, so I really like them. I like stuff that has very basic clothing. As you can tell, mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot of print here. <laughs> um, but what I... One out of them that I really like, oh, I don't have it hanging up. Um, there's a really cool brand called Outer Known. They make these pants. They're a very, um, they're a sustainable and ethical brand. So obviously the price point is pretty high, um, but this pant is fabulous. I wear it. It's been like, it was like my 2020 pant. I wore this constantly because it's a, it's a linen and it's elastic waist. It's got pockets. It's great. Um, they make this really beautiful gauzy top also um it's actually very like san diego vibes it's just very beachy and relaxed and lovely so um i like to look for that kind of style clothing awesome um okay so speaking of your closet so when you're managing categories and i jamie had this question i'm curious about it too how do we get like how do you manage those categories loungewear activewear what categories do you have? <laughs> so I am not, so this is also very personal. Um, I am not a wears active wear person or wears loungewear outside of the house person. Um, I have kind of my own mini capsule of my loungewear. So stuff that I wear only when I'm home, my sweats, my sleeping clothes, that is its own little thing. And kind of what I tend to do is I try to think about how much I want to do laundry. <laughs> and that's kind of what reinforces how many of those items that I have. Um, I don't include that in this kind of capsule wardrobe thing. Um, but if your style is like, if you wear your leggings instead of wearing jeans all the time, then by all means, like don't count your jeans and just have a couple of jeans off to the side for when you do wear them and then really just focus on the stuff that you do wear all the time. Um, but yeah, I tend to kind of, I think if I was someone who uh, exercised a little bit more <laughs> and had like a lot of athletic wear, I would make my own little capsule of athletic wear. And kind of what I try to do there is think in color scheme so that I could have stuff that all looked good together, but didn't need to be like sets of clothing. 
Yeah, that's helpful. I know some of us, I would like to be more active than I, <laughs> you know, you, I have I those go, goals hoping. Yeah. <laughs> hoping I will be. <laughs> no. Yeah, I just like end up wearing my jeans when I go out for a walk and I just yeah. do that. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, we're also curious about how you have your clothes laid out there. Is that something that you have all the time or do you have actual like closet you put it in and it looks so beautiful? So this is, um, I actually, I might do this from now on because I didn't think all of my stuff would actually fit on here, but looking at it all mm -hmm. together is really lovely. Um, I have a mix of some things in a drawer and then some things hanging, um, so usually like my t-shirts and stuff don't usually live hanging up in my closet. They're folded, but I wanted to kind of show them off today. Mm -hmm. And I have like, I have them, I guess if this was all in my closet, what I would do is I would, I would organize it like this. So I've got like my tank tops here, then I've got t-shirts here. Um, I've got my tops and I go from like short sleeve tops to long sleeve tops and I've got shorts. And I've gone from kind of like the linen-y cotton stuff to the denim. Same mm -hmm. thing with the pants. Then like my, my jeans here. And then I, I love overalls. I almost wore overalls today. So I've got like some jumpsuity overall pieces there. <laughs> um, and then some skirts, some dresses, and a little chore coat. So um, I really love the look of stuff from like lightest color to darkest color heaviest or lightest material to heaviest material and um, there's something just really satisfying about that for me and um it's also probably like leftover from my days of working retail so um yeah that's kind of how I have it broken down into like little subcategories I love that um what about for your kids uh, Janelle asked if you apply your capsule wardrobes to your kids too absolutely so especially with an infant they grow every three to six months and you need to like have clothes for them for that period of time. Um, and so what I do, because it can be super easy, especially, oh my gosh, with a little girl, it is so easy to get sucked into the cuteness. Um, boys, unfortunately, just do not have the same, uh, same amount of options as little girls do. So with her specifically, I, like I said earlier, I stick with a color scheme and I get really clear about, okay, we're moving into spring, we're moving into summer. What colors do I like to dress her in? <laughs> because I'm the one picking that stuff right now. And I make sure to, I pick about five colors. Um, and then I try to have one item in each of those colors, if that makes sense. So I try to have like five tops, five bottoms, um, a couple of maybe rompers or dresses or whatever for her. Um, and then like some neutral colored hats and accessories to go with that. That way I can keep it streamlined and it doesn't, it doesn't turn into too much. That's great. Awesome. Um, oh, I see one more question. Um, how did you decide on your color scheme? So in the beginning, I just I just kind of, I used Pinterest to be honest with you. And I looked up a bunch of color schemes and I thought, all right, I got to pick some neutrals because I needed like a neutral base to my wardrobe. And so back in the day, I was using a lot of like black and gray. I kind of was interested in like a camel brown color. So I threw that mm -hmm. in there. I didn't have a lot of clothes in that color. And I knew I liked the color green. So I started looking for green. And um, over the years, as I've kind of deep as I declutter my closet every season or so I just notice a trend and that's part of the noticing of what you're wearing um you'll notice what colors you're drawn to I'm like I said right now I'm having a moment with this brown I love this brown color I have obviously really I'm really drawn to green um not just because of my blog title I just truly love that color I think it looks nice on me um, and so I have like these different tones of green. Um, I'm pretty honestly nitpicky about the tone of green that I wear. I really like an earthy tone. Um, and then I really like this kind of mid tone or mid wash denim. That's my favorite kind of denim to wear. Mm -hmm. In the summer, I like something light wash and a mid wash. In the winter, I wear more dark wash jeans. Um, and nowadays I don't really wear black. I used to wear it a lot more. 
Um, but I've just noticed that I don't, um, I, I just don't wear it all that often. So I don't buy it anymore. Um, same thing with gray. I used to own a lot of gray and then I realized I, I don't, I don't wear it. Um, so that's kind of how I land on color schemes. Um, one tip that I've heard that's really helpful is if you have no idea where to start with your closet, look around your home because you more than likely are drawn to some colors in your home that um, you kind of have made those subconscious decisions already. So if you've got a lot of yellow in your yeah. home, you probably really love yellow. For sure. That's a great idea. Um, and I know we also have some comments here with other awesome brand recommendations. Um, Rihanna said Girlfriend Collective is oh, yeah. an inclusive, ethically produced, mostly recycled clothing brand. I'm like writing these down as, <laughs> as I say them out loud. They have really great active wear from what I've seen. Oh, hey, that'll, that'll help me be more active right now. Yeah. Um, and then Dana mentioned Veda, Veda Capsule, um, Everlane, Marine wow. Wear. Um, so some other just kind of thought I would shout those out. Um, and Mate then, the label. Mate the label is like coming for me on my Instagram ads. So that's what is it? Make? Think, it's Mate, M-A-T-E. Mate. I think that's how you pronounce it at least, but they are just, they are targeting me. So I think that's a more splurgy brand too. So that'll probably yeah. be like a splurge for me. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then I think one more quick question that, that we have is clothing that is gifted to you. Um, what do you do if it doesn't necessarily fit your capsule style? Um, so if it, if I get something that really just doesn't like work for me, I will do, I will ask for if I can, um, like exchange it or something like that. Um, I know like that can be some, a little hard, <laughs> but yeah. I, I've definitely, so because my, um, I think because my family has known that I, I'm kind of particular about what I wear and what I keep in my closet, they've asked me for like, again, they ask for Christmas lists and stuff like that. And so I will put a lot of stuff on the Christmas list that I would love to have, um, that fit any of my categories. And then I, I usually just end up getting something off of that list or something inspired by that list. So it, it kind of works out. Um, but if not, what I, what I just tend to do is I think gifting gifts are like, it's kind of served its, its purpose and like the gift giver wanted to give you this item. And so I don't think that we have to feel, we can feel grateful for the gift and the gesture of it without necessarily holding on to something that we know we won't wear or use. Um, there's a lot of people out there who would wear or would use or could use um, that item. And so I don't personally, I feel like more guilty holding on to something that I'm never going to wear than um, letting that go and having letting someone else actually give that peace, purpose and life. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, I think we're about, um, about ready. I know we've got some really fun, fun comments in the chat too. Um, but I don't see any more questions right now. And so, um, I think I'll pass it off to Rihanna, um, who will also close us out. Alex, this was so wonderful. Um, thank you so much for your, I, I, get, I took copious notes. I am like ready to go through my closet. So thank you. Good all of your your helpful tips and tricks today um and for joining us for wear justice week this has been really great so yeah thank, thank you. you it was a pleasure so thanks for having me guys yeah yeah thank you so much alex i feel like i yeah i learned exactly what i was hoping to from you it's so much easier once you see someone's example because it sounds so intimidating like a capsule wardrobe what if i don't pick enough of the right pieces i'm gonna be stranded with my capsule, but um, I think that was really helpful and so flexible and simple to get started. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, well, it is We're Justice Week at Point Loma, and if this topic is interesting to you, you are more than welcome to continue the conversation. We have a webinar tomorrow where, where you'll hear about conscious closets, so more about like the environmental impact 
of the particular types of clothing that we wear. And that is from a local organization called I Love a Clean San Diego. So feel free to spread the word on that one. I'll throw it in the chat. It is open to anyone. Um, there is the link to register in the chat for you. Um, yeah, Point Loma community and beyond, anyone's welcome to join for that one. And um, you can follow along with the rest of Wear Justice Week on our Instagram. It's PLNUCJR. Um, if you loved hearing from Alex and what you heard today and want to share this with friends, the recording will be available on the PLNU Alumni YouTube channel shortly. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. We really loved getting the chance to connect with all of you, especially this topic during our Wear Justice Week. Um, great to see you all on Zoom in our little virtual world. So thanks for joining us today. Thanks for being here.